So get this one. Word limits on college applications are now racist. At least that's what Harvard student newspaper claims in a new op-ed, taking the university to task for limiting student applications to 200-word essays. The Harvard Crimson piece wrote, shortening these essays has a disparate impact that falls heaviest on those from marginalized backgrounds. Learning to package yourself within a shorter amount of space is a product of an advanced education. Pierce Morgan joins us now to react. Pierce, so apparently at, in order to get into Harvard, uh, people had to write one long essay. Now uh, they've changed it to, I believe, five shorter ones. And now that affirmative action has been overturned, people are saying, well, doesn't give people in marginalized communities enough space to explain their background. So it could disproportionately affect them. How did you not laugh as you read all that? <laughs> uh, this is, look, if I was doing an application to be on Fox and Friends this morning, for example, mm. I wouldn't need 200 rows. It would just be rows between two massive thorns, right? Oh, this God is, bless this is, you. <laughs> this is not and it was poetic. This is, <laughs> this is not difficult, OK? And, and let's just think about this for a moment. A, of course, everything's racist, and, of course, everything at Harvard has to be racist. But how stupid would you have to be to think that you could get into Harvard, one of the world's supposedly most academic institutions, if you couldn't even do a 200-word application about yourself. So take it back to that, and you think, well, why would someone that dumb be applying anyway? Then you go forward to what Harvard are basically implying, which is people from ethnic minority groups are so stupid mm -hmm. that they can't do that, mm -hmm. which is unbelievably patronising. In fact, I would argue that's where the racism is. Mm. Basically saying, actually, because of your skin colour, we don't think you can achieve a 200-word analysis of your own life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you were on the receiving end of that thought process. That there is racism. That's right. So it's completely nuts. Uh, it's absolutely indicative of what's going on in universities, not just here. We've got the same nonsense in, in Britain. And my message to anybody who is thinking of going to Harvard is, if they ask you to do that and you read that, don't bother. Go somewhere else. Yeah. Honestly, go somewhere else. Go to the University of Life. Go and work in Starbucks down here and you will have a better education than a place run by people with that mindset. I promise you. Because if you go through life thinking everything's racist, you are going to have a nightmare life. Totally agree. Bravo. We were just talking about this with you during the commercial break because I think we're all genuinely fascinated by this. You have a new series out coming out on Fox Nation. Um, you have interviewed, um, how many is it, eight peers? So it's, it's called the killer interview with right. Piers Morgan. Now, I would argue all my interviews are killer, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, these Different are actual... kind of killer. <laughs> these are actual killers. These yeah. are some of the worst killers in America, actually. Um, eight different people, very different stories. There's one that's airing on Fox News tonight at 10 o'clock, Carl Carlson, probably the worst liar and insurance scammer you'd ever meet because he was insuring people like his wife and then his son, and then they died in accidents days after he insured them and he took the payouts. Horses, cars, you name it. This guy, if he, in, if he was insuring any of you, get the hell out of there. Is this him on the screen right now with the uh, face shield on? This is Christopher Porker. This is another one who... who this is an, a more interesting story. Some of them, like this guy, Gosh. is a very uh, smart, intelligent, thoughtful, quiet kid who apparently axed his parents to death what? in the most brutal manner in their bed. Now, he says, I didn't do it. There is no actual hard evidence that he did. So it's a fascinating encounter. The police think he did. They just think he's so smart that he managed to cover his tracks. So you've got some that are like that. Others where you know they're guilty and, the, and it's like cat and mouse. Yeah, how do you approach that killer interview? Sometimes you get one hour with these people and you're talking about despicable killers who have had years to prepare for an interview like this. They know every tiny bit of their own cases. And it's, it's kind of like cat and mouse. You know, you just put the bait out, you let them effectively, in words, hang themselves by lying, 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 but, of course, they don't have to stay in the room. They can walk out at any moment. So you have to be careful. And then if you really know they're lying, there's a sting moment about three-quarters in where you go, actually, when you said this, I know that's a lie, and here's why. And you go through it. And that is when the, they take an interesting turn because some of them, of course, react, as you would expect, very aggressively. Really quickly, Piers, mm. because we have to go, what, what, is that what attracts you to this? Like, you've interviewed a lot of guys. Mm. You've just had the UK Prime Minister, you Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Mm. You just had the Spanish... Luis uh, Rubiales, yeah. The Spanish uh, Soccer Federation president. Mm. You get a lot of great interviews. You mm. do a great job. Why these guys? Like, why did you want to do this? There's something uniquely compelling about going into a room with armed guards all around you 
you know, in one of these cases, they said to me, be careful with this guy. He's the only inmate we had who broke out of his handcuffs with his bare hands, right? That, that can concentrate the mind. Also, I'm never interviewing in normal life people who have axed people to death, people who have committed multiple horrendous murders. So there's a friction, there's a tension. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I owe it, I think, to the victims and their families to try and hold these people to account. Some of them have never given an interview before. Some of them took the fifth in their cases. So they've never actually been held to proper account. I see that as a proper duty to the families to say, and I've had so many lovely letters afterwards say, thank you, finally, finally, you held this person that wow. killed my loved one to account. So they're very compelling. They are despicable people, but if that was a criteria for not being in the room with them, I obviously wouldn't be with, with you and Pete today, Will. So, well, um, you, got, you got that right about one of us. <laughs> wow. I'd only be with Carly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's fascinating. Uh, they're all on Fox Nation. Uh, and yeah. then, as I say, tonight, Fox News, uh, 10 o'clock. Well, you are uh, a one. brave man, and I'm sure you did a fantastic well, job, as you That's always what he wants. do. Thank you, Carly. That's why he did well, it. Well, he called me a rose between two thorns, exactly. so I'm trying to return the favor, and I do Thank mean you. it. Thank you, Carl. You're very welcome. Yeah, maybe we don't need these guys next time. <laughs> Let's go, Pete. Let's I, go. Used to, I used to do sure. a morning show back in England. Well, I was, I was, you know, oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, could right. easily, I could easily just slip in here. Yeah, why not? Get rid of the two thorns. Then you walk off the set. Well, we can walk Ameri off this set. An right American now. rose, <laughs> an English rose. We just have oh, these two thorns. this is forcefully removed. I love it. We could have okay. a red coat here. <laughs> thank you, Pierce. Right, thank you so Great to see you. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.